Hello everyone, Seraphin here, welcome back for more Fire Emblem Blazing Sword. When I last left you guys, we finished up chapter 29 and 29X. We are all prepared for the penultimate chapter of this particular quest, chapter 30, Victory or Death. And we recently got a ride back to the Dread Isle from Fargus and his pirate friends. Struggles to recover from Enian's death moves onward. Yes, that's what we're all doing. And there's Nurgle himself, the jerkwad. The enemy awaits there. One who must be defeated. At all costs, apparently. Who knows? Surrounds himself with his morphs and waits for Elwood's arrival. You gotta wonder, does he, like, run out of that energy and then just, like, can't create anymore? Like, what if we just don't give him any more essence for him to steal? Then he's just screwed and he'll just die eventually well I guess he's still a really powerful sorcerer regardless of his essence abilities but still at any rate the final battle draws near but we have one more to do first and this level is arguably just as long if not longer than chapter 27 was it really depends I guess we'll have to wait and see it might go quick it might take a while yes I see that I mean, I wouldn't mind having a level 18 Berserker. Oh wait, I already have Dart, never mind, we're good. Makes women smile and villains revile. Not really sure what that's supposed to mean. Deliver a message. I'll worry about that when the time comes. Well... You didn't give him the message. Oh good, you're gonna raise this poor little dragon boy who just lost his sister on a pirate ship? I'm sure nothing bad will happen there. What if you don't? Like, what if he just killed all of you? That'd be pretty bad. I'm surprised Nils is just like, how dare you try to speak for her? What the heck do you know? Dart apparently walks slower than the rest of my team. Yeah, I don't know what he's talking about either. Don't come back dead. Well, if he dies, I don't imagine he'll be coming back at all. Interesting. Typical pirates. Aye, aye, Captain. At least it doesn't say Captain, like Captain Crunch. Hmm, I wonder what he's talking about. Okay, bye. Be safe, tiny child on your own. <laughs> Never understood that part either. Here we go more than... Is that supposed to be Nurgle? Because it's a regular druid and not an arch druid. Huh. Never noticed that particular discrepancy either. Go, Lipstella. Bring their essence to me. Hmm. Oh. Huh. That's, uh, twisted. wonder when Greybeard will show up. Well, it could be any moment now.
Oh, snap. Okay, well, I don't get two dancers, so I don't know what he's talking about. Yeah, I'm fine now, all of a sudden, just snapped out of it. Creepy Morph Lady! Creepy Morph Lady music! My humble servants. Oh look, dudes! Dudes for me to kill. Perfect. I mean, they're technically already dead if you think about it, but... I wonder. So, Nurgle can create morphs. So he can effectively create life from this life essence, so to speak. Does he, like, create their armor and their weapons and everything, too? Or does he have to find those? I imagine it wouldn't be hard, because he had the whole Black Fang to go through. And he could just kind of loot all that stuff. Anyway, I just thought that I just never really cared of him about Does he create the armor and gear and everything, too? Anyway. So, we have Victory or Death. This is a very big map. As you can see here, it takes a, quite a while to traverse. And there's these mountain ranges all over the place, and random little fortresses. And of course, our favorite returning champion, the Ballistae here. Uh, there is a ruin up here to explore, and one here as well, and I believe one all the way down here too. Yep, sure thing. So we're going to make sure we snag all three of those. Uh, you'll notice these ballistae are a slightly different color. They have like a yellow tinge to them, as opposed to the generic whitish ones down here. These ones are iron ballistas. These actually have a longer range than the regular one. They shoot up to 15 squares away instead of 10. So these are rather dangerous. I don't think they're any more powerful than regular ballistae, maybe a little bit, but I'm not entirely certain. But there's a lot of them, and there's snipers all over the place, so we need to be wary of that, as in no sending Florine out there to get herself shot at. Uh, Heath does have the Delphi shield, though, so we'll probably send him in to take care of them rather quickly, at least that's the idea. Uh, then we have Limstella here guarding the final th uh, gate. This is the area we have to seize. Uh, Limstella's kind of ridiculous. She is a level 20 sage. She actually has more than the cap allotted for HP. You'll see she has 68. Normally the HP cap is 60. Uh, her defense cap is also higher than a typical sage. You'll see that bar goes all the way across to 30, where a typical sage I think has 23 or 24 defense, which was totally unnecessary because she's only got 24 anyway. Although I think in Hector hard mode she has like 28 defense or something like that and has, res and has resistance capped. Uh, you'll notice a funny thing about morphs, though, in general, and including the bosses, they have zero luck. All of them have zero luck. Uh, there is not a single morph in this game with anything more than zero luck. And I guess that's to reflect the fact that they're not truly human or something to that effect. Um, other minions that we fight throughout the course of the game, including some of the bosses, all had luck, but uh, morphs do not. Um, I believe... Uh, don't quote me on this, but I think there's other guys we'll fight later that do have luck, but I'm not certain. But they're not morphs. So, at any rate, uh, we've got to, we got plenty of promoted enemies in this map to chew through. There's a random brigand here. I assume his goal is to just go for this ruin and blow it up. So we're going to take him down quickly as well. Other than that, though, it's just plow to the end of the line and then bust out Limstella and cap the final resting, or the final Dragon's Gate spot. Uh, Limstella also has Fimblevether magic. I believe that's how you pronounce it. Uh, in Hector mode and above, she also has a Bolting Tome, because of course she does. Every boss sage in this game has to have a Bolting Tome, except this one for some reason. Uh, but she will drop her Fimblevether Tome, which is nice. Uh, it's very, very potent anima magic. It's the only ice spell in the game, actually. I know anima is supposed to reflect nature, but so far all we've seen is the fire and lightning. This is the only ice spell in the game. It requires A rank to use. It 13 power and 12 might. It weighs a lot. And in fact, Limstella's going to get weighed down by it quite a bit. So her 17 speed is actually only effectively 12, which means just about everybody on my team will be able to double her. With the exception of, of course, Wallace and probably Hector. 
Uh, she has a lot of defenses, but honestly, she won't be all that difficult. Her attack's very high, but if, as long as you can heal through it, she'll be fine. You also notice she has S rank in staves as well as anima magic, even though she doesn't have any staves. This is another thing that breaks the game. You're not supposed to be able to get two S ranks. Uh, Limstella is the only exception to this, and there's a couple other characters that do, only because it's relevant to game mechanics, I guess. I don't know. We'll see. At any rate, we're going to move on. So I got my whole party down here. Uh, we're not bringing Legalt any longer. We don't need a thief for the rest of the game, so he's irrelevant now. There's nothing to steal, no chests to open, no locks to pick, so he's done. And we do have Nils in, in place of Ninian as my... He's a bard, not a dancer, but you get the idea. It's the same thing. And this is also the last chapter that we will de be deploying Merlinus. He is not available in the endgame. So, whatever we... Oh, look! Nils brought us an Earth Seal to promote somebody at the second to last chapter. Why on Earth? That being said, it is nice for your funds ranking, because it's worth a solid ton. And I'm not going to actually sell it or use it, I'm just going to keep it in the convoy, so... That'll be nice. You know about my flute song? Yeah, I know you play a flute. What is that? You can't do both of your part, you're only one unit. At any rate, let's get going. We're going to send Wallace over here, because he's going to have a grand old time taking out all these hilarious armor knights and generals. They can't even get to him yet, which is funny. I'm going to give him the trusty... <laughs> not trusty. Completely untrustworthy devil axe. And we'll send Dart and Lin this way also. And we'll bring Pent too, in case they need a healer. Pent, I probably gave bolting back to Pent just in case he needs to lightning bolt something from a distance, but I can't imagine that will be all that situational. Uh, we're gonna send Hector. You know what? Let's have Ellawood get some fun with his new bona fide new C ranking lances, which gives him access to the killer lance and the short spear. And we'll have him shred some people. All in good fun, all in good fun. I'm going to make an effort to use Elwood as much as possible because I think he's going to be... Honestly, he might be my the best of my three lords right now in terms of overall combat potential. Uh, Lin is exceptionally good right now. She's very fast, and her strength's also great too. However, she does not have the endgame capabilities that Elwood and Hector do, and we'll explain that once we get to the final chapter. It's it's largely inconsequential. She's, she's, it's not that she's not useful any longer. She certainly is, but... For one particular fight in general, she's not quite as useful as Hector and Elowood are. So, I will explain that further once we get to that point. In fact, Hector might have some issues with a particular final fight, but we'll have to wait and see. Hey, you got speed! Not bad, not bad. And he's capped skill already, which is only a measly 24 cap. Uh, he'll probably he'll cap defense, almost certainly. He'll probably cap strength still, too. Um, his luck's not that... It, his luck's good. His resistance is pretty solid, too, but he's not going to get much better than this, honestly. Elwood, however, is probably going to cap a few things. He's most likely going to cap luck, probably speed, probably skill, maybe strength. Uh, his defenses are a little lackluster, but that's okay. Uh, we're going to send Raven and Lucius up toward the top part, and we're going to send Florina with them. And we'll probably send Kent to... No, we'll have Kent go with these guys. And I can have Rebecca pilot this ballista, but not really to any benefit. So I'll send her up with those guys. And then Heath will be my... I guess my shock trooper. I need him to go for that brigand and take him down, so... And we'll have Nils... Oop, that's not a little bit. That's Ken. You know what? That's okay. I'll just have him wait. Uh, does this guy have a bolting tome? He does. So we need him to be taken care of rather quickly. I don't want Kent to get more experience than he needs right now. I want Elwood to have that. Oh, yeah, that's right. When you move forward, you move forward enough, automatically spawn some reinforcements. We're going to park Merlinus right here on this tree. So he doesn't get hit. Not that he's going to get hit anyway. His luck is so freaking high right now. And his speed for some reason also. I didn't realize that horse carts were all that maneuverable, but... I guess it's a little more plausible than a static tent being able to dodge attacks. Oh jeez, I forgot Wallace is not super great at dodging things. Well, good thing I brought Pent with me. It 
shouldn't be too bad. Yeah, that's another. That's one of the iron ballistas there, I believe. Well, maybe not. I'm not sure actually. Ballistas are a little annoying. They're not even that threatening, really. They're only really threatening to flying people, or I guess really fragile, um, really fragile magic units, I guess. Beyond that, though, they're not really all that intimidating. I only brought a physics staff. I really should have brought something else for him. Like a close-range healing staff so he doesn't break his physics staff. Although, if I'm being honest, this physic probably is not going to last the level. Which, honestly, is fine. Ooh. Oh, this guy will die in one hit. Alright. You need to, uh... I want to think about it. Does he need to use the Devil Axe any further, really? We'll, we'll take a chance. It's fun, right? Hey, there we go. I always feel really skittish using this thing, but I realize it's incredibly useful. You just gotta be really—you just gotta be careful. It's really nice for someone like Wallace who doesn't tend to double with it, and also has high enough defense that it's. Well, I guess its defense is relevant because it works off his enemy's defense, but still, you get what I'm saying. I don't think Lynn can one-shot this guy unless she uses her Monica T, so let's bust that out. Thankfully, this thing is so versatile. When it shreds the two, her two main counters in the game, it's pretty bad. Like, I guess you could say it's not still not effective against wyverns, but at the same time, she rarely engages wyverns, and she has a bow for that. Uh, this guy is gonna go up in a puff of smoke. No crit, but you know what? Dart doesn't need it, because he's so freaking strong it doesn't matter. Two non-crits on 58. I guess it's just as, it's just like having two 58% hit rates, which isn't stellar either, but... More speed, more luck, alright. Again, his strength isn't quite where I would have liked for him to have it at this point. By now he should have capped it, I would have thought. But, I guess, not every- not- it doesn't always work the way you want it to. It's beside the point. At any rate, let's move on. We're gonna have Florina fly up and take out this Ballista, I think. Uh, she's just in range to do it. That's an Iron Ballista, yep. Actually, you know what? I think the yellow-colored ones are actually killer ballistas. As in, ballistas with a slight critical bonus. It's like 5%, it's nothing special. It might be like 10%, I'm not sure, but... I, it's, it's far from what I would consider a killing weapon, certainly. Uh, let's have Kent take out this brigand. Uh, never mind, he's not going to hit the guy. Let's have him take out the Bolting Sage. Bolting sages annoy me. Yeah, again, I, I Kent, Kent, I think, is going to be, sadly, not going to be making the final cut here for the end game. Uh, there are precious few slots available to bring to the end game. You're required to bring all three lords, you're required to bring Nils, and you're required to bring... Uh, I think that's it, I think that's it, actually. But you get, like, I think seven slots for other units to bring. And that's it. So you have to make the most of those seven slots with what units you have available. And that's like, that's just normal mode. On hard mode you get even fewer. As far as I know. Alright, Elwood will probably... Well, oh, Elwood doubles this Swordmaster? Man. How bad are Swordmasters? To be fair, this guy should be a lot quicker than he is. But because this is normal mode, they're not very challenging. I'm sure if this were hard mode, he'd be a lot faster. See if we can't get Elowood to a reasonable level before the end game. All right, all right. There we go. Skill, speed, luck. Yeah, he'll he'll cap skill for sure. Probably luck as well. Speed and strength might be a little shaky. I guess we'll have to wait and see. He needs five points from one and six on the other. And we'll give Hector his trusty Iron Blade. We're gonna send Heath to take care of Mr. Brigand here. He's gonna do it with his sword because it's easier. Is that everybody? It's just yeah, it's everybody but Merlinus. It's all right. Oh, he's gonna go for Kent instead. Interesting choice. Who will easily dispatch him regardless of this fact. Yeah, I think when I play through this again, we're gonna use Sane instead of Kent and see. We're gonna. I'm gonna like 
take a look at the differences between the two and see. Um, again, it, it really doesn't matter, honestly. The what, how one turns out in one playthrough versus another, because again, it's it's all random chance anyway. Because Kent might turn out to be god tier one playthrough and then be garbage the next. Like it, it's entirely stat and random chance driven. So Sen, Sane may turn out to be amazing when I play when I play through using him, but it doesn't mean he's necessarily better. It just means he got luckier. And actually, that's one of his better traits is I think Sane has pretty fantastic luck. Certainly compared to Kent, Kent's luck is not spectacular. Uh, his... I think that's the only stat, really, that Kent does not excel at, or is at least is not decent at, is luck. Uh, resistance, too, but I, there's very few physical units, barring Pegasus Knights, that have decent resistance growth, so... That's not really saying a whole heck of a lot. Going for Kent again, what is up with this? This guy's almost the same color as him. Just Kent has a blue shield. Surprised he doubled that guy, actually. I guess he has steel weapon, too, but... Steel swords don't weigh that much. Yeah, I'm sorry, buddy, but you're just not turning out as good as I wanted you to. Oh, here comes an Eclipse, which will not hit me. In fact, it has a hit rate of zero. Eclipse is one of those things, I'm not even sure why they bother, because it never hits. And even when it does, it's, in, it's incapable of killing anybody unless they have one hit point. So, it's like, why bother? Just bring bring Flux and Nosferatu and Luna and you're fine. That's really all you need. But what does the enemy know about strategies? We'll have Rebecca pick off this brigand. It's odd that they summoned brigands and that warrior as reinforcements and not fighters. Considering brigands promote into berserkers. Well, there's that skill. I was waiting for her to level up some more. Her speed, man. I tell you what. It's off the charts right now. She's faster than most sword masters at this point. Oh, that warrior has a devil axe. Lol. I was tempted to let him hit me with it and see if he hit himself. But it would never it would not have worked out as well as I wanted it to, I'm certain. I'll have adorable little Florina pick off the stupid berserker. Not berserker, brigand. Yeah, she's, I'm pretty sure, going to be one of my best units. In fact, I think she's going to be, uh, she's going to be endgame lance material. I'm fairly certain. Raven's going to get the endgame sword. Dart's going to get the endgame axe. Rebecca, the bow. Lucius, the light tome. Pent, the anima tome. I don't have a dark magic user, but I don't need one. And then all the lords get their own special weapons at the endgame. Obviously, we know Elwood has Durandal. I'm just gonna kill her axe. Actually, you know what? My hit rate on him is not stellar because he's in a forest, so why don't we let Lynn just take a pot shot at him? And she's really close to C rank with bows, and then she can use a killer bow, which is just gonna make her absurd. Not that Lynn already isn't great. There we go, that's C rank and bows. And I actually already gave her a killer bow, so she's here with one already. Perfect. We're going to send Wallace ahead. There's some reinforcements. Here we have some more nomadic troopers. We haven't seen one of those in a very long time. Not since Uhai, I don't believe. Uh, I could send Heath up to that, or to take a look at that village, probably, but let's have Ellawood occupy this fort. Set him up with his best bro, Hector, too, just because. I don't want these wyverns to necessarily go for Kent right now, so we'll hold them back a little bit. And then Heath will fly in and take care of that ruins next turn. Or we could have played for Kent just to get the experience, but that's okay, it's only 10 points. And he's almost capped anyway. Sadly, um, leveling up your dancer slash bard doesn't really do a whole lot for them, just makes them harder to kill. Obviously, they're not being engaged in battle in any way, shape, or form, so... And they sh honestly shouldn't be getting attacked anyway, so their survivability is largely inconsequential. Which is a shame, but what are you gonna do? 
I'd rather have one that can take a hit or two than not, just in case, you know? And it is nice that you don't need to really put any effort into training them, they just do their own job and they get experience for it. There's a killer axe from a general. Not quite as, you know, overbearing and cool as the critical hit lance animation, but you know what? Nothing ever is. Here we get the, the fail druid here, still trying to eclipse the people to death, even though he never will be able to. I guess you gotta try. You really don't have to try, that's the funny thing. I don't even know why he bothers. Of course, the slate brand does nothing to Florina because it's magic based. Well, what do we have here? A purge tome, you say? I must have missed that. I didn't even notice he had one of those. That's okay. He won't be around long enough to use it, so... And of course, Heath has the Delphi shield, so that Ballista is not going to make a lot of difference. Oh, silly Wyverns and their Javelins. And here come the Cavalry, quite literally, as a matter of fact. Alright, let's see what Eloa can do here. I'm going to send him to take out this here Ballista, methinks, because Lord knows we don't need one of those. Yeah, it's a killer Ballista, alright. Nice crit. We certainly don't need any killer Ballista around. Skill and luck. Yep, that's a skill cap, I believe, for him. No, not quite. He's got like 26 or something. We'll have Hector take out Mr. Wyvern here. It's always so satisfying to hear that noise. Clink! Nope, nothing. Sorry. Thanks for playing. Take this guy out. I think he's actually got a Fortify staff. Yeah, he does. This is an amazing staff. This is like Physic, but to everybody. In range. It's a little bit ridiculous. And it fully heals them almost. Uh, let's do a Silver Lance. Make sure I kill him in one hit. I can do Killer Lance too. Completely necessary critical hit. But it looks cool. I believe I've mentioned that a few times so far. So, uh, the final chapter is going to be really interesting. That's cap speed for Heath. Yep, sure is. Look at that. Awesome. The final chapter is going to be fun in that uh, there it. This is actually something that really bugs me a little bit. So, there in every Fire Emblem game, there's there's like legendary weapons to wield, right? Maybe they're legendary, maybe they're just really, you know, just the best made weapons, that kind of deal. Uh, in this game, there some of them are legendary that you get, like for example Durandal, and Hector's Armods are legendary weapons. However, there's endgame weapons that require S rank to use and are the strongest weapons in the game. They're not legendary per se, but they are very unique sounding, and they're incredible incredibly strong. In some cases, they're actually even stronger than legendary weapons, which is a little bit off-putting, in my opinion. Like, why would you have weapons that are stronger than legendary weapons that generic enemies are going to have? Like, that doesn't make sense. Uh, that's not the most annoying thing, though. The most annoying thing is the fact that you don't get them until the very last, very last level. Whereas, in a lot of other games, they let you have the legendary guns for a couple of chapters at least beforehand. You know, it kind of like as a trump card for some of the harder parts. But in this one, it's like, you don't get them until the very end and you barely get a chance to use them, if at all. Which is really irritating. It's like, all this effort we put in and you're giving us these awesome weapons, but we're not going to get to use them? Like, what's the point? And it's one of those things that just really bugs me about the last chapter. And as I mentioned, there's there's an there's an uber weapon for every class. Like, there's a master sword. Not, not like the master sword. You know what I mean. But there's an S rank sword, axe, lance, bow, anima tome, light tome, dark tome. No staff, though, strangely. Um, a lot of other Fire Emblem titles have like a legendary staff that does something amaze balls, but this one does not have that. Uh, that being said, in order to acquire said weapons, it's not something like you go to, you unlock a chest or something and get them, or they're, uh, the, they're given to you. Well, some of them are given to you during the story, but you actually have to kill enemies that drop them, and they wield them against you first, and that's probably the worst part, is these guys have these absolutely mystifyingly stupid powerful weapons that they attack you with, and then once you beat them, then you can have them. 
And again, by that point, there's no, there's nothing for you to kill with, and that's really bothersome. So, be prepared for me to complain about that when we get to that point. Because it's not going to be fun. I'm not too keen on it. And the last chapter is by no means easy, in any context. I forgot about that stupid Purge Bishop again. Well, Heath dodged this time, it's fine. He won't be lasting much longer anyway, so it's fine. Once again, we have the cavalry. Oh, these guys use swords, that's right, so they can actually engage Lin at melee range. But they have to try to hit her first. Well, they both have swords, too. Nope. Nice try. Even with your cool, under-the-horse-flipping animation, you still can't land a hit on me. At any rate, uh, we will explore the remainder of this chapter in the next episode, and it probably won't take me too much longer, honestly. So, that being said, uh, we're going to postpone this chapter until the next time. And we're going to finish this up, and we'll move on to the last chapter. Uh, the last chapter is divided into two parts, and then there will be an epilogue, so expect a minimum of uh, probably four more episodes. So this might go into... it might not last all the way through the week, we'll see. But At any rate, until that time, I will see you in the next episode. Hope you've enjoyed the series up until this point. We're nearly finished, and we'll finish it up as quick as we can, hopefully at any rate. So until that time, thank you all very much. This has been Seraphin, and we'll see you next time. Have a great evening.